first Christmas, we have a Savior. We can be forgiven, and everything that destroyed our fellowship with God can be erased. Because God is with us, death is conquered, and fear can't win. The sorrow we experience in this life is temporary, and our pain is only for a moment. Because God is with us, joy is possible, peace is attainable, and glory is inevitable. So sing out today, give him the honor he deserves. Join with the angels in proclaiming his birth.
you guys know Haley. She is so man. She's on the phone all the time. And uh, when she gets a little excited, her heart's like oh, you. You can put her hand on your hand on her chest. You can feel her heart. And that's how mine feels right now. I'm like man, baby, that's kind of scary up here. But you know, I I just uh, man, it's just a blessing to me. I was uh, I was sitting there with the girls and. Uh, just to be able to, to know that, that we're here together. Not just, not just my girls and me and their husbands and, and, and my grandkids, but everybody here, you know. I just, uh, it's, it's such a neat feeling to know that there's this many people that love God. Amen. And, and, and those that aren't here, you know, we just pray that for their safety and, and their well-being. And I, I just... Uh, I would just like to uh, start with a word of prayer, if we would. And Father, we just thank you for this day. I just thank you for the blessings you give us. Just protect us and, and watch over us. Just love us and cover us with your blood that all that's spoken today is of you. And we thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start out this morning. And, uh, you know, Tanya asked me the other day, she's like, you know what you're going to talk about? And I said, I, I really do. I, I, when, whenever I do this, I, I get to thinking, God, what do you want me to say? You know, what, what would you want me to share? But it never comes to me till like, yesterday, you know, because I, I think I don't want to put something on there and then it not be him. So I don't, you know, but I want to just, I, I did want to start this by saying, you know, this is the time of year for joy and for family. But most of all, it, it's a time of year for Jesus. You know, because sometimes we get caught up in everything else. And, and Jesus is kind of, I don't know, I think he kind of gets left out sometimes, you know. And uh, I, I was thinking about when Jesus was born and, and his birth. And it were, I'm going to have you guys, if you will, you got your Bible story to Luke 2, verse 8 through 14. So we'll start right there. Just give you just a second here and we'll go. And that night, some shepherds were in the field outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah of the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David, and this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of clothing, of cloth. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven were praising God. Glory to, the God, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to all whom God favors. I was just, you know, as, as I was reading this, I was just thinking about the hope that came with this. And, and, and the hope that we were going to be given. Because we, we really didn't know that. I mean, they didn't know that. We just, they just knew there was going to be a Messiah. They knew there was going to be somebody coming to save us and, and to protect us. But us as grown-ups and, and them as grown-ups, who would have thought it would have been a little baby? You know, because you, we're looking for someone big. You know, if, if someone's going to protect me as a kid, I was growing up. And, you know what? As long as I had my dad... I wasn't scared of nothing, you know. I, I, I feel like uh, that's the way I want, I want my kids to be. That's how we should want your kids to be. That If you're with me, you don't have to worry about nothing because I'm going to take care of that. So we, all of a sudden there's Jesus and there's a little baby and, and that's who we're, we're going to look up to and that's who's going to take care of us. But we understood that because the angel of the Lord was saying this. He's saying that. This, this, this is who it is. This is the Savior. This is the Messiah. This is who's going to take care of us. And so then what do we got to do? We got to have the hope that they're right. We got to have the hope that this is what's going to happen. You know, even right now to this day, we got to have the hope that that's what it is. You know, I don't, I, I don't doubt that one bit. I don't, I, I know that that's who it is, you know. He's done, he's done too much for me. He's done too much for you guys, people I've seen. I know what he's done, and I know the hope that he has, you know, that he gives us. And the presence that he has in our life. You know, uh, I was thinking, as it said, as, as the radiance, as the radiance of, of, the, of, of the glory of God was shining, I, I think to myself, 
we don't know, I, I don't know that we've ever just been in that radiance, but since they come out with these new LED lights, you shine one of them in your eyes, man, I'm telling you, you, I think that might be pretty close. Because you can't see for a little bit after one of them things shines in your face. And that's, that's kind of where we're at here. It's like they got something that they had never seen before. They got something that they had never understood. What is going on here? What, what is happening here? It's got to be God. Stuff like this doesn't happen. You know? And then, and then it goes on to say, as, as the armies of heaven, as the armies of heaven were rejoicing and the praising and, the, and the, all, that, all that goes on with that, I think, man, that's what was, that's, that's something that, you know what, as, as I was sitting here and, and, I, and I was listening to the choir and I'm thinking, man, we got to get some robes on these people. You know, because that was neat. I was thinking, man, that was neat. I wanted to just jump up and like, man, I, I don't know. I just like that. You know, and, and sometimes we miss that. We miss that excitement. We miss that joy. We miss that, that, that feeling. You know, I, I think that and I, as I saw that, I thought, man, can you imagine how good that feels right here? How much better it's going to feel when we get to heaven and, and we know, hey, this is where we're going. This is, this is where we're at. I think to myself, you know, this was the first time that we really felt that, that, that them people really felt that joy. Okay, now I'm going to have you guys go with me to uh, Matthew. And that's in, in verse 1. And this, this, this is really neat right here. This is when Jesus was born. Now, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to, to be married to Joseph. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, being just a man, decided to break the engagement quickly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Don't be afraid to go ahead with her and marry to very small marriage. For the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from the sins. All of this is to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will call him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. This right here. When I read this here last night, I thought of all these little kids that are in this church. That little, like, little baby right there. Man, I get, I saw her last week and her hair was like sticking up and I was like, ooh, man, I just, you just can't help but touch them little kids, man. You want to just to touch them. And, and uh, I think to myself, golly, can you imagine how Mary felt when she saw Jesus? No. No, not that that was the Son of God. That was a part of it. Can you imagine what Mary felt like when she saw her son? You know what? I've had, we had kids. Me and Tammy had our three girls. Not one time did I cry when I saw them kids. I was just so happy. I was like, oh, man, I got a kid. Now, you know, I got a kid. You know, I was so excited. But I, there's not been one time that my kids haven't had kids. I just can't help it. I just, it just breaks me down. And I'm thinking, what a blessing, God, how good you are, you know? Because I've got older, and I understand what that means. I've got older, and I know what that means. You know what? It's, it's just different. It's different. So, I mean, as a dad, as a grandpa, I know what that feels like. But as a mom, I would never, I don't have a clue. I don't. Because I, I, I see what they, what, what they go through and, and how they have to hold that baby and say, oh my gosh, it's just the neatest thing in the world, you know? And, and I think that that's, to me, that's how Mary felt. I, she, you know, yeah, it, was, it was the Son of God. And I know she would like, oh, praise the Lord, the Son of God. Can you, really, I think, and she was human like you guys are, like we are. I know she thought, I got a son. Look at this, I got a son. And I think that was a, that was a really a, a, a neat thing right there. And, and that's what I want to just kind of start out with that because that is the joy. Okay, that's, where we, that's the joy that we have. And that's the joy we're getting. The joy that we felt when they were singing. The joy that the kids sitting on our laps and just being in church together. That's a, that's a joy that, that, we, that we get to have. 
That's a joy we get to have because Jesus came. He came. And that, that's where we're at. And, and I, I really, man, I, I just love that. I love that. And I want to share another thing with you guys. This is just kind of something that happened to me this weekend. My nephew plays for Canadian. And man, they guys got a good team. I, I really don't think anybody can beat them. You know, they, if they do, that someone's going to surprise them and maybe they might not show up that game. But I will tell you this. It was neat being at that game, but I got to spend a, some time with some cousins of mine that I hadn't, I hadn't been around in a while. It's, it's time that I needed. It's time, it's, it's family time. I don't know how many of you guys grew up with your cousins that, you know what, from the time we were little, and I know some of you have, from the time we were little kids, that's the only friends we had. Because we grew up with them, and, and we were around them, and, 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 and we understand that, and, and I think uh, there's some of us that are here that do understand that. You know what, when we came from, we came from Colorado and moved here, and my dad's brothers came with him. And when my dad's brothers came with them, all us all boys came with them, and all us girls came with them. So everywhere we've ever been, we've been together. And that was the first time that, that four of us boys that, that we were together here at Booker and grew up in this school were together. And, and at this time of year, at this time of year, this is family time right here. And I think that's what was a blessing. You know, that's what was a blessing, just to be able to talk with them and laugh with them. And, and I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm sitting there, and uh, one of my cousins says something, and another cousin says something to him, and, and I'm thinking, I ought to go ahead and say something. I thought, no, that's not, I don't talk like that. So another cousin said, you know, so I tell him, I said, you got to realize we're all together. You're not getting a pass. You know what I mean? You're not getting a pass because someone, someone's going to say something because we're not all in the same place, is what I'm saying. As a family, as a family right here, as a church family, we're not all in the same place. Some of us are, some of us aren't. You know what? Someone does something wrong over here, someone does something wrong over there. We're still a family. And, and we got to understand that. So whenever we do that, we, gotta, we can't say, well, we, okay, he's out. He's out. Hey, we, we ain't talking to him, the more he's talking to him. No, we're, we're together. This is what brings us together. Yesterday, something happened really neat yesterday. We were over at Perryton. We went over there to play. And, and uh, Shannon and Matt's team played each other. I, I get to help, help, help Coach Shannon, but she tells me to be quiet a lot because <laughs> I really mess things up. And, uh, but anyway, we tied at the end of the game. And then we tied at the end of the next quarter. Tied at the end of the next quarter. And we tied at the end of the next quarter. This is no kidding. We tied at the end of the next quarter. And we're, at the end of the fifth quarter, we're still tied. And Matt and Shannon are talking, and they're like, well, maybe we should just call it a tie. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't believe in that participant trophy. I want, someone's going to win. You know, somebody's got to win. And so they're like, no. And Shannon says, no, no, you know what? We'll play. This is the last quarter. That was for the fifth quarter. If it's not done, we're done. And they tied. It ended up a tie after five. I was thinking to myself, what better way to be a family than that? God knew what he was doing. God had no idea. That wasn't a surprise to God that they were going to play them five quarters and we were going to end up tied and that I was going to walk up there and try to be a, an idiot and say, no, we're finishing this. No, it wasn't a surprise to him. He, he knew that was going to happen. And he knew that Matt was here and he knew that Shannon was there and they were going to say, no, you know what? Let's, one more and we were done. And we were done. And, and I was like, I was so happy because after the game, we got all the girls together. And we were being, all three of us were able to hug the girls and say, we're all one. We're all one family, and we love each other, and good things are going to happen with us as the future rolls on. It is, because we have parents, and we have, we have you know what, it's neat, because we, there's a lot of parents that are at them, at them girls' activities, and the boys too, but there's parents there, and that's what it takes. It takes, it takes that. It takes someone to show them and direct it, just like Jesus showed us and directed us. If Jesus wouldn't have come and grew and went through his life, we wouldn't know what to do. But we do know because he was there and he showed us. And I think that is, a, to me, 
That's, that's such a neat thing. And that's why I said, there wasn't a lot of scripture in what I'm telling you now. But I know we're talking about God. Because God is who he is. God is what, what, he, what he does. What he does is for us. And we've got to understand that, that as we come to this place, if, as a church family, we have each other. You know, we have each other. We take care of each other. You know what? Uh, one of the, the neatest things for me, being in church, is, is this right here. This communion. Because I, I got to talk in a church one day. They don't believe in this. They don't believe in doing this. If they do, it's like at somebody's house. That, I don't think that's right. And so and they made the mistake and they let me preach. And I said, you know what? I love having communion. You know why? And they were all like, I could tell that a lot of the older ones like, oh, great. I said, because I get to have lunch with you. Me and you and God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we're all together. We're eating lunch together. And they're like, no one can deny that, right? They said that. We're supposed to have communion. We're supposed to fellowship. We're supposed to enjoy each other. And like I told, and this is what I told me. Exactly what I told you. I said, here's the deal, guys. I said, I know you don't understand. I know you probably don't agree with me. But this is the only lunch I'll have with you. Because you're not going to invite me to your house. I'm not going to invite you to my house. we got different things going on. Not that I don't like you, but I, I do like them. But I can't, I can't invite them because they got their own thing going. i got my own thing going. You know, you got your families. i got my family. That's, but guess what? It was right. When something is spoke out of the word, you can't say it ain't happening. If something is spoke out of the word, you can't say no. Because I, I figured out something. And I got a friend of mine, and, and I've learned this from him. He said, the Bible says, okay, you can't argue with that. But that's what the Bible says. We all know God. You know, I've known God for a long time. It took me a long time to follow him. But we know him. I know him. I was raised in church. <coughs> I, I knew where I was going, which was not good for me. Because I knew where I was going. My mom and dad taught me. They had me. I was raised Catholic. I was in a church all the time. And then when I got old enough to say I wasn't going, then I wasn't going. So, what, But then, family, they bring me back. And that, that's, why, that's why I was thinking about this. And, and I, I love this. I, I just love it. You know, and then I get to thinking about this next part. And it's talking about the love, the love that Jesus has for us, the love that he has for us, and how much he loves us, and how much he has done for us, where he came from, and where he ended up. And, and I think to myself, this is Christmas time, and I love this time. You know, I, I don't just love it because of the presence anymore, you know, like when we were young, but I do love this time. Because I know what it means. I know what God has for us. And, I, and I'm just going to share with you in, in John, verse uh, 13, 34 through 35. Huh? Yeah, John 13. John 13, verses 34 through 35. It says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. That's not, that's Jesus saying this. That's red letter stuff. And I, I man, I got to share this with you guys. One day, we all came up to the altar and the kids were all up. I don't remember that day. All the kids were up here. And I was standing right here and, Man, I was just like, oh, praise the Lord, and I was praising the Lord, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, no, this is not good, <laughs> because we were singing, and we were praising, and I thought, I am going to take off running. I, I, I don't know if you can, I'm just telling you this, because some of you guys, man, sometimes when I get so excited, I, I've just taken off running, and I thought, oh, no, this is not going to be good, 
because everybody's going to go, what the? John, he's still crazy. Look at him, man. He took off running. And then I was going to have to visit with, with our guys on the board that I'm on with and visit to you guys and say, hey, why did you, you know, but here's the deal. Because I was doing that and I was praying and I'm like, God, is that you? Is this you? And he's like, be still. It's okay. Be still. It's okay. But here's what I'm saying. I know you guys love me. And if I would have took off and I would have got back here, I was raised in this church. You guys like Ray and Hugh and, and uh, Tommy and Craig and, and Raymond and, and Vicky. Some of you guys have been here with us for a long time. Didn't you? you know me. I've not always been this same guy. I'm still not the same guy. But I've not always been this guy that can just control my emotions. And, and so I really had to pray, God, is this really you? Is this really what I need to do? And I was praying right here, and he said, be still. It's okay. You just, you just hang in there. I'm taking care of this. But that's why I'm saying. The love that we have for each other, it, it's something special. It's something special, this love that we have for each other and how much God loves us and how much he wants for us. Because be honest, if I would have done that, would you got to kick me out of here? You might have thought about it, but I don't think you would have, you know. You might have said something to me, but I would have said, hey, I couldn't help it. I could not help it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys something that happened to me when we were kids, and some of you remember this. We turned the lights out here in Booker. I don't mean we didn't flip a switch. We, flipped, we turned the lights out here in Booker and Lipscomb and Paulette and there and all everything over there because I got with some guys, and they said, Hey, you want to turn the lights out and whoop it? And I said, sure, what do we do? I thought we were going to flip a switch. Oh, no. <clears throat> they went and got a piece of wire and a couple of pieces of pipe on each end, and we threw them into the transformers over there. Kids, never do that. <laughs> because you get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> a lot of trouble. And I mean it. But you know what? <coughs> My family still loved me. Even when they had to go get me at Lipscomb. They still loved me. You know what? I ended up in this church after that. You guys still love me. I was tough. I was tough after that. Because I know what people were saying. I know what I put my mom and dad to. I know what I put my family through. Because like my dad said, he walked into the coffee shop one day and they were saying, yeah, Johnny. And then they saw him, they're like, oh, shoot. Yeah, they were talking about me. But they're not just talking about me, they're talking about my dad, too, you know, because he raised me. So this is where I'm getting at. The love that we have for each other, it's just got to be there. It's got to be shared. We've got to know that we love each other, how much we care about each other. You know, in the good or in the bad, it doesn't really matter. It's like this right here. we got to love each other. You know what? It's harder to love friends. It's a little bit harder to love friends, right? Because when friends do you wrong, you can cut them off and they're on their way. You, you can't do that with your family. And we shouldn't really do that with our friends. But it's easier to do. You know what? I've, had, I've got friends of mine. I don't run around with them. I still talk to them. If they want to talk to me and call me, or if I see them on the street, I talk to them. But I don't run around with them. Because I'm not going to go do drugs with them. I'm not going to go out drinking and... and and, and running around on my wife with them. I'm not going to do that. And, I, and, when, and they don't come around me because guess what? I tell them, you shouldn't be doing that. And they don't like that. So a lot of them I haven't seen in a long time. And, and that's, what, that's where we're at. But you know what? I've got my friends that are like that. I've got a good friend of mine. He's sitting in jail right now because of something that happened a couple of weeks ago. He's like a kid, man. And I told him, I, I, I was with him this summer, and I said, dude, you've got to get straightened up or something bad's going to happen. Guess what? It did. He would come to me and we would share. But you know what? When he got tired of hearing and I haven't seen him in a couple of months. But you know what? I love him. <coughs> And I will, I will be visiting with him soon. But that's, that's where we're at, because there's some people that you just can't get there anymore. 
You can, if they don't, I mean, you just, you got to say, okay, I'm here if you need me. But if you're not, you've got to turn to God. That's the only way. And I, I share this up. Uh, I share this with you guys. I just want to share this up. Uh, this, these couple of verses here. The first one is in Matthew 26, verse 47 through 50. It says this. So hold on. Put 26, 69 through 75. Sorry. 26, 69 through 75. Meanwhile, as Peter was stirring outside in the court, a servant girl came over to him and said, you were one of those with Jesus in Galilee. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later out on the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around him, this man was with Jesus in Nazareth. And Peter again denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some other bystanders come over to him and said, you must be the one with them we can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter said, I swear by God, I don't know this man. And immediately the crow crowed. Suddenly Jesus' words splashed in Peter's mind because the rooster crowed. He was denied me three times. Before he crowed, he was denied me three times. I'm bringing this to you because Peter messed up. Peter messed up and he said, I won't do that, Jesus. I won't do that to you. But he did. He did. He turned his back on Jesus. But did you know that he asked Jesus to forgive him? And Jesus did. And Peter became one of the, the strongest men to stand up for Jesus after that. He forgave him. Jesus forgave him. And that's what, that's what we got to understand. Jesus forgave him. Okay, let's go to this next, this last part right here. That's where we're at, Matthew 26, verses 47 through 50. And even, and he said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with the most that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and other leaders of the people. Judas had given them a free signal, a free arranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over to him and give him a kiss of greeting. So Jesus came straight. So Judas came straight to Jesus. The greeting teacher, he explained and gave him a kiss. Jesus said, "My friend, go ahead to do what you have come for." Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Okay, this is this is what it's all about right here. Because Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas was the one that turned him in. I want you guys just to think about this for a minute. If Judas would have asked Jesus to forgive him, would he have? He would have. But we can't do that with people. You know what I mean? Jesus did it, and the guy killed him. He, he did that. Jesus knew that was going to happen, but sometimes we can't do that with people. That's why Jesus came. That's why he was born. That's why he died, so we wouldn't have to so we wouldn't have to go through some of this stuff. You know what? I forgave a lot of people in my life that have hurt me. And I've had a lot of people forgive me that I have hurt. But it's okay. Because I love Jesus and I know he's taking care of that. Like I said, some of them I don't talk to anymore. And they don't talk to me, but you know what? We're, we're all right together. You know, we're all right together. So John, did you forget? Do what? Did you forget what they did? I did tried to forget. forget. You know, that's true. You, 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 you have to. But here's the deal. <coughs> Brandon said, did you forget? You know what? I did forget, but I did forget. I don't know, some of you people that are teachers might, you say, that don't happen. How do you talk, how do you forget and I forget? I do forget, because you know what? I ain't worried about that no more. You, we can't be worried about that no more when it happens. That's got to be in the past. But you still remember that Jesus forgave his wife. He did, and Jesus forgave, he says that. He said, I won't, whatever you do, I won't remember that anymore. But here's the, here's the end of this, and, and this is what I want to 
to say here, is there anyone at this time that needs to do that? Is there anyone at the, right now that needs to just say, you know what, I'm done with that. I want to be with God. I want to be with Jesus. I, want, I saw this show last night. I have become such a pud in my opinion. I don't know if you guys know what a pud is. Some of you do, some of you don't. We call them puds back when I was growing up because it's a catcher's mitt. And a pud has a lot of extra padding on it. So when they throw the ball real hard, it doesn't hurt. And I tell, I tell the girls, and well, the girls, they know, and I tell Tammy, I've become such a pud in my old age, and they're like, they laugh, and I'm like, because last night, I watched a show yesterday, and I, 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 man, if you guys get a chance, you need to see this show. It's called The Coat of Many Colors by Dolly Parton. She put this show out. Man, I was crying in that movie. <laughs> I'm like, hey, pud, you crying in the movie. But you know what, and, and it got me, but I'm going to tell you what got me the worst. And then we're going to have an invitation. I mean, you guys want to come up? That's fine. I don't even pray with you. You just want to come up and, and, and release some stuff. Just come up here and do it. You know, God's here. There ain't nothing I can, there's, I can pray for you, but there's really nothing I can do for you, you know, except pray for you. But I will tell you this. At the end of that movie, the dad, he, wouldn't, he really didn't want, he didn't know how to accept God because of the things that happened. And he's standing at the door, and, and the, the wife says, Dolly, Mom, this is a true story. They say, the Mom said, I love you so much. I want to be with you forever. And he's like, you got me forever. And she said, no. This is just paraphrasing. He said, no, I don't have you forever. Yeah, I have you here, but I want you more than that. I love you more than that. I want more than that. And he's like, so the dad's a preacher, and he says, what does she mean? And he said, eternity. Eternity. That's what I want. When I go to heaven, I don't want to be there by myself. When I get there, I want you with me. You know what? When I get to heaven, I want my wife there. I want my kids there. I want my grandkids there. I don't, I don't want to go without them. That's what she was saying. She was saying, I want that. So anyway, he comes through the door, and this is what really got me, because she says, he goes, I love you. I'm telling you, I love you. I'm in the middle of church. And she's like, that's not what I want to hear. I want you in heaven with me so when, when we get there, we can love our family together and always be together. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll do it. You guys need to watch this show. It's good. <laughs> And I'm telling you, when I saw that, I thought, man, that was me. That was me 35, 36 years ago. Because I remember standing over there in Perryton, and this guy named Dallas Holmes was singing, and, and this guy had preached on the, this guy named Cruz, this gangster from New York. And I can remember standing at the front of the, uh, behind the pew, and I was like, Hey, I gotta go up there, and I thought, no, I don't want to go up there. And I'm dang, I gotta go up there. And I was fighting it, and I was shaking, and I thought, I gotta go up there. And I look at Tammy, we're just dating at the time, and I said, babe, I gotta go up there. And she's like, what? And I, said, I gotta go up there. And she said, oh. I said, I'm going. I said, you wanna come? You come with me. And you know what? I went up there. I had no clue that I was going up there, but I know now it was God. The Holy Spirit was telling me, it's time. Time to start to straighten it up, boy. Because those of you that knew me here, I promise you, when I was walking up there, man, I, I, I don't know people's mouths with that hair. <laughs> like, oh, man, that guy, he's going to rob the church. <laughs> That's why he's getting in there. No, it was so cool, man. I got up there, you know what? It took me two weeks and I fought it off. But then when I had my daughter, my first daughter, Brandy, I realized it's time, it's time to be in here, man. But I already had that feeling, so I kind of had an idea what's going on. But that's where we're at. If you want that, if you don't have that, you can come up here, and I'll pray with you, or some, one of the elders, board members can pray with you, deacons, anybody can pray with you. But that's where we're at. I love you guys so much. Merry Christmas. And uh, go ahead. And we'll, we'll close the prayer. Our invitation this morning.
morning is away in the main building. Verses 1 and 3, please. you so much for all that you do. God, I just ask you just be with our families, be with our, our uh, people that are traveling. Just continue to bless us. Uh, Father, that you just, all these teams that are still uh, playing, that you just give them safe travel mercies. And, and Father, thank you for the, the boys, the teams from Paulette and the, and the blessing that you gave them. Thank you, Jesus. We just ask for your guidance, your mercy, and your grace just to flow through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat>